We have already seen how to execute a single algorithm in Sextante. This is, however, not a very good idea when we have a large set of input data, because when we execute a single algorithm, we just execute it in a single set of input data. Imagine, for instance, that we have 100 raster layers, 100 data elevation models, and we want to calculate the slope for each one of them. We can do that using the toolbox, but we will have to execute the slope algorithm 100 times. That might take a long time and is not a very productive way of calculating, of computing all those 100 layers of slope. We will see how to do that in a much more productive way using the batch processing interface. If we open the toolbox and we just look for an algorithm that we want to execute, for example, the slope, and we right click on its name, we will see an option called batch, pro batch process files. Notice that this is active even if we do not have any layers loaded in our GIS. For instance, right now I cannot execute the slope algorithm, I cannot run a single execution of it, but I can run the batch process. That's because it runs on files and the files that have those layers that I'm going to use as input layers, they don't have to be open in my GIS. So I don't have to have layers in my GIS in order to execute a batch process. If we click on this, we will see this new window here. This is the batch processing interface window. And you can see a table with several different rows. Each one of these rows represent a single execution. So in the case of uh, calculating 100 slope layers from 100 of these elevation models, I will need to have 100 of rows. I'm going to make an uh, example that's a little bit smaller, just with three data elevation models, three layers. I'm going to calculate three slope layers, but the way to proceed would be the same if we had more than just three. What I have to do is basically to fill the information in each one of the cells in this table. And considering that each row, as I said, represents one single execution. What I have to select here now is not an open layer, as in the case of executing a single algorithm just once. I had to select one of the open layers. In this case, I have to select a file that contains that layer. So I can just double click here and then type the name of the file that contains the layer that I want to use as elevation. Or I can click on this button and then look for the file in my file system. There it is. Now I can do the same for each row, but I can do it much easier. And what I can do is just look for the set of files that I want to use as input and select them all. And you see that the number of rows has been expanded to fit all the layers that I selected. There were two of them and now there are three of them because I selected three layers as input. The next thing that I have to do is to fill the values in method and units. These are the default values, but I can change them as well. So I just click on here and then I select the value that I want. To make it easier, if I want to change a group of cells, a bigger block, not just a single cell, I can right click on the cell, then copy, and then I can paste the value in all the other ones. Paste. So you see, now it's changed. And I can do the same with the units. In the case of outputs, there's also a difference from the single execution of an algorithm, because in this case, I have to enter a file name. There is no option to, for instance, save it to a temporary file, because here it makes no sense. So what I have to do is to type here the file name, the output file name, or I can right click here. And I will see this dialog, which is classical dialog to select a file, but it has this area here with some additional elements. I can just type the name of the file where I want to save it. Let's say I want to save it here in my desktop. So it's called slope.asc. The extension here, as it happened when executing single algorithm, defines the file format as well. 
So if I keep this default option, do not out of fill, I will just see the name here. But these out of fill options make it much easier to fill all the, the rows, which in case we have many of them, will save us a lot of time. I can type here the name of the file that I want, and then select, for instance, out of fill with numbers. And that will fill all the rows with slope one, slope two, slope three, and so on, until the last row. Let's see how that works. You see, automatically it has filled all these rows. If I select the other option, out of fill with values, I can select here one of the other fields, one of the other input columns that I have in, in the table, and it will add the name of the parameter or the name of the input that I have selected in that field. For instance, if I select elevation and type this slope.asc here, I will have something called a slope and then the name of the layer, which is dm, then a slope, dma, dm bay, and so on. Let's see how that is. So you see a slope dm because this is called dm, this file here, and this one is called a slope dmb because I have this dmb here, and so on. The last thing that I have to adjust is the upper region, which is just the same as we already know, but in this case we have just two options, fit to input layer and user defined. There is no option to select the extent of a view or the extent of a layer, but just these two ones. Once I have filled all the cells in the table, I just press OK, and you see it's executing the slope and then saving that result to the file name that I enter, then there's the second execution, once again, and then the third one, and it goes until the last one, and then it will show a window with a summary of the operations that have been performed. Here it is, you see, the inputs that I selected, the output that I selected, and if the process ran okay or not. So in this case, it has run successfully, and I have created three new layers, three new slope layers from three input data elevation models.